Hello, this is HG Wingnut, and today I'll bring you a full video review of the Sager NP9870-G based on the Clevo P870DM-G. Uh, basically, this is a, uh, a desktop and a laptop chassis with a desktop i7-6700K Skylake CPU and a GTX 980, not 980M, but a 980 uh, graphics card. But first we'll take a look at the uh, overall specifications. All right, we'll take a look at the specs here of the uh, Sager NP9870-G based on the Clevo P870DM-G. Um, the, again, this laptop was provided by uh, LPC Digital. Many thanks to them for providing this review sample. Uh, just in case people were wondering, the G in the uh, uh, name of the laptop stands for G-Sync. Um, it is a 17.3 inch 1920 by 1080 uh, LPS mat, um, 75 hertz um, LCD. Obviously, G-Sync compatible. It comes with a desktop class, i7-6700K. Um, actually, that should be a 95 watt TDP CPU. It has the desktop um, GTX 980 um, mobile GPU uh, uh, converted to a uh, MXM 3.0B type connector uh, card. Has eight, uh, four chips of 8 gigabyte DDR4 2400 megahertz uh, Kingston HyperX. Has a uh, Samsung 950 Pro 512 gigabyte NVMe PCIe M2 um, SSD. That's a mouthful, huh? And it also comes with a dual Ethernet NICs as well as a killer dual band, or sorry, a killer uh, 1535.82.11 AC wireless card. And it also has a one terabyte 7200 RPM hard drive and it comes with Windows 10 64 bit. So this is basically a desktop. Um, in a laptop chassis. Now you can see here on the, uh, if we take a look at the overall surface of this machine, you can see these facets here. This here is actually uh, backlit uh, um, lighting on the lid here. Uh, the surface itself is a, a speckled uh, plastic um, smooth surface. Um, that carries throughout uh, all the way down to the um, palm rest and surround over the keyboard. Uh, the keyboard itself is solid, um, it's quiet as well as uh, medium travel. Uh, very excellent uh, for typing. Haven't had an issue there. You can see the uh, large trackpad, touchpad, I'm sorry, um, and uh, two full tactile buttons and a fingerprint reader uh, with accompanying software to log in and also. To your machine as well as log into websites etc um, and uh, it's a 17.3 inch LCD uh, it's an IPS uh, as discussed uh, based on G-Sync um, close this down you can see the speakers here in the back the speakers are actually pretty decent on this machine I'm um, looking at the ports on it you've got uh, lock slot, two mini display port out, a uh, Thunderbolt slash USB 3.1 uh, Type-C uh, port, a USB 3.0 as well as a SD card slot in the back. You've got, uh, you can see the all the uh, cooling for this thing. Um, you've got the USB 3.0, HDMI, and the four pin power port for a 330 watt, that's 330 watt power supply. On the other side you've got dual killer ethernet uh, nix gigabit three usb 3.0 and then your four uh three and a half millimeter eighth inch uh, audio out front there's really nothing there uh, looking at the bottom here um you can see all the uh cooling um slots here to cool the uh, 980 gtx 980 as well as the i7 6700k cpu and uh Removing this uh, require this bottom panel requires moving one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine screws, and I have not found a good sequence to actually get this uh, bottom cover off. It's a little bit of a bear, but just gonna just pry up on it. There you go. There's the guts of the machine right there. Um, you can see right here is the GTX 980. 
Um, it is uh, basically the same specs as the desktop class 980 card and the uh, modified MXM 3.0B form factor. Notice how much wider it is in the slot. Typical MXM 3.0B are only this wide, but this has the uh, obviously the faster 7000 megahertz RAM, video RAM, and then the full 980 uh, um, core, GPU core in here. You can see here though that it does support SLI in uh, other th MXM 3.0B cards that are not this TDP, 200 watt TDP GPU. So there is that option if you want to go with the um, lower end GTX 980 or 980M mobile or even 9070M uh, mobile GPUs, you can do those in SLI. In this configuration obviously you've got two fans to cool the single GTX 980. Um, you can see a large number of heat sinks and um, heat pipes. Um, over here is the desktop i7-6700K again with its own fan and uh, heat sink. Um, you've got two of the four uh, DDR4 modules in this machine are here. Um, as you can see, the other two are underneath the keyboard. Uh, there's your subwoofer and then your battery. Uh, the battery is removable, requires four screws to be removed. Alright, sorry about that interruption there, um, but I was going to show you the battery here next, which is a 89 watt hour uh, battery. I did do a basic uh, battery test, did drain it from 100% to 5% um, in power saver mode, in airplane mode, so no wireless activity going on, 50% LCD brightness, and uh, backlit keyboard off, and I was able to loop a 1080p movie in VLC media player for about three hours exactly. Uh, so there is some opportunity here for uh, basic uh, light workloads um, on the go without uh, being plugged in. Um, the storage subsystem has supports two two and a half inch up to nine and a half mil thick uh, hard drives or SSDs um, down in these lower slots here. See the screw here. And then uh, you do get a bracket. This here is a one terabyte, seventy two hundred RPM hard drive that came with it. And then you do get another bracket with the system so that you can load a second one if you didn't get another SSD or hard drive with the system. I'll go ahead and put that back. And now what I'll show you is the two M2 um, PCIe slots as well as the RAM and wireless card and everything which is located underneath the keyboard. In order to access uh, underneath the keyboard, it's uh, fairly straightforward, but unless you don't, not sure, um, once you know the trick, it's fairly straightforward. So basically, there's only one screw here. You can see it says KB. And then uh, once you remove that screw, you can see a hole by the CPU. Basically, take a blunt object like a small Phillips head screwdriver to push through there because the uh, keyboard is held in by this one screw and a bunch of magnets. So we'll go ahead and do that and show you how that's done. Remove that. Usually prop this up on the side. Open up the lid. Access that hole. Push on it. Just like that. Now I would hold the uh, keyboard up because those magnets will suck it right back down. So it's a little awkward here getting it back in position. But once we do that, we have pull the keyboard up. And there you go. Um, you can see here, this is the, uh, for the keyboard itself, this is the, I believe that this is the power for the backlit keyboard. And then the uh, circuitry for the uh, keyboard itself. Um, you can see the two other DDR4 RAM modules. The Killer 1535 802.11 uh, AC wireless card. See it's got two antennas there. And then also the two M.2 uh, up to 80 millimeter length um, M2 SSDs. Let me zoom in on this a little bit. There we go. Um, this one does support um, NVMe as stated. Um, this particular system comes with a uh, 512 gigabyte Samsung 950 Pro um, M2 drive as well as a 1 terabyte 7200 RPM hard drive. So 
I'll show the details of that uh, once I get into Windows here. I thought I would also mention here that uh, the uh, SSDs do support, or I guess the system does support RAID 0 or RAID 1 with either the uh, M2 SSDs or alternatively with the uh, set of two and a half inch drives underneath um, through the uh, system BIOS and uh, there can be a little bit complex depending on UEFI mode, um, AHCI, etc. So uh, something that you definitely want to look at the user manual on how to configure but that is an option. And uh, to put it back, just basically reverse the process, just kind of slide it back in, magnets suck it down and uh, close it up. The screwdriver. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and boot up the system and show you the BIOS. The BIOS is pretty sparse um, and that's typical of most Clevo laptops but Intel XTU allows you to overclock, underclock, overvolt, undervolt your CPU as well as adjust RAM settings so um, you do have that option through Windows. In any case um, I'll go ahead and button this up, boot it up and go from there. Before we boot the system up and go into more details on the machine, I thought I'd give you a quick uh, rundown of the BIOS, which you can see here. I'm just getting an idea for what's available. Sorry, I don't have my tripod set up. And that's it. All right, now I'm going to show you the uh, audio quality. I guess let you hear the audio quality as well as the uh, fan noise, and also show you the surface temperatures around the keyboard um, when the system is loaded. Um, first of all, there's Sound Blaster XFi, uh, which comes with the system, which basically allows you to adjust uh, some of the the bass, the volume. There's crystallizer surround. And, and everything like that. Different profiles for different uh, types of audio, movie, music, first person shooter, driving, simulation, adventure and action, voice, real time strategy. Um, EAX effects if you want them, scout mode. Um, basically it's supposed to allow you to be able to hear basically like a modified surround sound I guess. Um, but anyhow I'm going to set this to uh, music mode, turn the volume up to 100% and play the song Seven Nation Army by White Stripes for a f uh, about a minute so you can hear the audio quality. I know that uh, you're going to lose some fidelity because the uh, uh, microphone on this camcorder really is not that great but hopefully you can get a feel for its volume as well as its, its music or sound quality. Um, right now the fans are somewhat idle. I don't know if you can hear that at all. 
but uh, what I'm going to do is run Heaven Benchmark for a little bit and uh, I'll fast forward the video and we'll let it run through basically a full benchmark um, and then uh, check the fan noise from there. Right now the CPU is at 65 or 45C and the GPU is at 49C. I'll let you hear the fan ramp up for a minute here. Before I get into this, I'm going to uh, show you full fan speed, which you can set by using function in the number key one, then do it again to turn it off. It'll actually turn off and then it'll go back into its profile setting. So you might see a slight spike in temperature if you ever do that. But right now the CPU, GPU is at 68C. Okay, now you can uh, kind of hear. That's the speed that it's, uh, fan speed. That typically runs that when you're gaming. Um, it can usually, it can get a little bit louder. Uh, C, GPU is at 74 degrees C. And CPU at 67 C, so not too bad. Um, for our surface temperatures, was that 31.9, 32. Right around 31 degrees everywhere. On the touch palm rest, it's only like 25 degrees. 28 degrees over here. So, not too bad. Ambient temp is about 26 degrees C. Well, I'd say more like 24 degrees C. So, all right, now we'll take a look at uh, actual windows, um, some details of the machine and windows. All right, now we're into the desktop of the Sager NP9870G. This is Windows 10, uh, like it or not. Uh, the system did come pre-configured with Windows 10. I think some resellers do offer Windows 8.1 or Windows 7, or they do at least support drivers for it. Um, this uh, I did add uh, Start is Back myself, so in case you're wondering, this is not your typical Windows 10 Start menu, but use that. Um, but we'll go ahead and go through the hardware features of this machine. Uh, let's go ahead and minimize this. And we'll start with using uh, Hardware Info 64. Uh, it's got a lot of details on all the components here. And we'll go ahead, as we go through each of these hardware components, we'll go ahead and take a look at the details of each each component with uh, other um, applications here. But if we start with the i7-6700K, uh, you get details over here as well as in the system summary here. We'll also look at CPU-Z. Uh, but it is the 95-watt uh, TDP based on Skylake uh, technology. 14 nanometers, pull this up. Yeah, 14 nanometer Skylake, and it is 4 gigahertz. Uh, the sys, uh, CPU is overclockable using uh, Intel Extreme Tuning Utility or Intel XTU. It's a free download from Intel's website. Uh, stock speeds are single core at 4.2 gigahertz or 40x multiplier, with the other four cores active um, at 4.0 gigahertz. This is a quad core CPU with hyper threading. Um, and uh, but uh, all the benchmarks I ran when I initially ran this uh, system benchmarks, the CPU was running up in the mid to upper 90s and even thermal throttling in many cases. Even after repaste, I continued to have that concern. Uh, but I realized that uh, the voltage is running a little high. I think by stock, um, I'm able to undervolt by 150 millivolts, and that dropped the temperatures down into the mid to upper 60s, even maybe the mid 70s at worst case. So that's t technically a 20 uh, Celsius. Uh, temperature improvement. Um, so everything was run with this uh, uh, undervolt and then setting the one active core from 4.2 to 4.0 gigahertz just because at this setting I think that there's rare occasion at 4.2 gigahertz at this undervolt it would occasionally lock up if it was a single core at 4.2 gigahertz. So this seems to be the sweet spot for this machine, at least this specific machine. Thank you. 
I apologize time and again, my uh, headset goes out. This Logitech headset is flaky. If it doesn't get any audio coming out of it every four or five minutes, it tends to turn itself off. So you might see me uh, adjust the volume periodically just because of that. Anyhow, um, continuing on, I think we've touched everything on the CPU. Um, we'll go over benchmarks on that a little bit later. Uh, motherboard, we talked about, it's Intel Z170. Uh, memory is the uh, Kingston HyperX, the 4 by 8 gig DDR4, 2400 megahertz, as shown here. Um, CAS 14, you can see timings over here in the system summary of HW Info 64, and with a CAS of 2T, um, or sorry, a, a command rate of 2T. Um, Continuing on, you go to the video adapter. Obviously, there's the GTX 980, which is uh, the desktop class uh, CPU. Basically, it's a desktop C uh, CPU silicone uh, modified for a uh, mobile board to fit the MXM 3.0B slot. has 8 gigabytes of GDDR5 uh, video RAM. And look at uh, GPU-Z, you can see that, as well as uh, NVIDIA Inspector. I think it's more accurate, at least when you're looking at the clocks on this screen. But you can see the maximum boost is 1227 megahertz and 3500 um, video RAM speed, or double that, for effective 7000 megahertz um, video RAM speed. Uh, we can go ahead and uh, see that by, we'll go ahead and use GPU-Z's render test. And when we look at the sensors, can see that uh, it's running at 1227 megahertz on the core clock. Uh, video RAM is at 3500, or double that for effective 7000 megahertz, and it's at 1.31 volts. Um, we will go into uh, benchmarks based on this later as well. Um, we'll also touch on the uh, NVIDIA control panel um, options in a bit. But continuing on, uh, we'll go ahead and look at the monitor next, which will also lead us into the uh, NVIDIA control panel. But uh, it's an LG Philips LP173WF4-SPF1, which has the uh, hardware ID of LGD0469. It is a 17.3 inch, uh, 1920 by 1080 um, IPS matte screen. And I do have the uh, pain look specs listed here. You can see it's LG, same. Uh, panel model I mentioned, TFT LCD, 1920 by 1080, aka Full HD, FHD, LCD panel, 1080p, whatever you want to call it. It is IPS, um, matte, anti-glare, shows a brightness of 300, uh, contrast of 700 to 1, 25 millisecond response time, that has not been a concern at all in gaming, um, no ghosting, no issues whatsoever, and great viewing angles. It does say 60 hertz uh, frequency, but this does come factory overclocked as a 75 hertz panel. I have been able to overclock it to 100 hertz, and I'll show you that in a moment. Um, it is EDP two lanes and 30 pin connector. Um, but before we go there, we're gonna go ahead and look at uh, uh, Spider 5 Pro display analysis. Um, I did calibrate this using the Spider 5 Pro, and looking at the gamut, you can see the red here is this LCD's gamut, uh, compared to the sRGB and the Adobe RGB. The, uh, it is 93% of the sRGB and 72% of Adobe RGB. Tone response, I'm not sure if this means anything to you. It does not mean anything to me. Uh, but in case you're interested, I have it right here. There's your tone response and also your gray ramp. Brightness and contrast at different uh, brightness settings. You can see those here. Um, notice here that it says 320 uh, brightness and 851 contrast ratio. Compare that with the pain look specs of 300 brightness and 700 to 1 contrast ratio. It's definitely an improvement even from the, the stock specs. So there you have that. Uh, speaking of uh, refresh rate, if we go into the NVIDIA control panel, um, we'll go to resolution settings. Stock resolution here is 1920 by 1080, 75 hertz. I was able to overclock it to 100 hertz as you can see here. Go ahead and adjust volume so we don't lose connection. Um, and uh, I have not gone higher than 100 hertz, but I know most uh, users that I've seen online have indicated they can refresh this panel to 90 to 100 hertz uh, without issue, but your mileage may vary. Um, as far as G-Sync is concerned, um, I have it disabled right now only because when I was doing benchmarking, I didn't want it to hinder the uh, performance. The only reason why it would hinder performance is because it caps your FPS at the uh, maximum refresh of the LCD. 
Um, so I just want to show raw horsepower of the performance of this system. Uh, when you do enable G-Sync though, um, you can enable it for full screen or full screen and windowed mode. You can also turn off the uh, maximum cap um, uh, performance of the LCD. So instead of, if you want it to go beyond 100 hertz, if you have the LCDs selected 100 hertz, you can um, turn off, uh, if you turn off V-Sync, in order to run G-Sync, you have to turn on G-Sync. It's here somewhere. Um, blah, blah, blah. Anyhow, you'll turn off V-Sync here. Let's go ahead and turn on G-Sync. Enable, apply. Okay, then we go to Manage 3D Settings. Let's see, G-Sync Monitor Technology is on. And Vertical Sync is on, but you can manually turn that off if you want to end up going faster than your refresh of your screen, which I don't know why you would because then that kind of defeats the purpose of using G-Sync, but anyhow, that option is there. Um, let's uh, continue on to the storage system here. Um, you've got, uh, this can support two M.2 NVMe drives, um, uh, 80 millimeters in length, as well as two two and a half inch, three and a half millimeter, um, two two and a half inch, nine and a half millimeter height drives. And this one comes with the Samsung 950 um, M.2, as you can see here, as well as the uh, one terabyte 7200 RPM HGST drive. Network-wise, it comes with uh, the dual killer Ethernet uh, gigabit controllers. You saw that uh, on the hardware externally. It also has the wireless um, 1535 802.11 uh, wireless network adapter. So it's got uh, good performance there. I was able to get about 45 to 50 megabytes per second transferring data, sequential data from my Asus router about 25 feet away through two walls. Um, so it's, it's good performance there. And then the battery, um, there you go, 89 watt hours. And this one actual capacity is at 87.9. So it's less a little bit of charge, but that's typical. Um, rarely is it ever at the design capacity. But I was able to get, actually able to get three hours of battery life uh, looping a video at 1080p um, using VLC media player in uh, power save mode and airplane mode, uh, screen at 50% brightness and L, uh, backlit L, LCD off. Sorry, the backlit keyboard lighting off. Um, and now I'll go ahead and show you a few, few features of Clevo software itself. Uh, let's start with the keyboard app. Um, you, you have macro control um, through this. I won't go into the detail much, but just to mention that you do have that. Um, you also have the backlight control. There's three zones you can see here on the uh, keyboard that you can control, as well as the backlighting of the laptop itself. You can control uh, colors and, and also like the tempo, how you want to do it, dance, wave, cycle, breathe, custom, random, flash, tempo. Um, so that option is there as well. Change the brightness too. Um, there is a Clevo control panel which you can bring up uh, by hitting the function escape key on your keyboard or it does come pre-installed and you can just uh, one of these here is that one, Clevo control center. So this is what it gives you. You can change your uh, power options up top. Um, you can also change them down here. They have power options down below here. Um, you can, uh, I have it set to automatic, but you can set it to overclock profile, maximum profile. Uh, maximum speeds, you can either press that or hit function in the number one key on your keyboard. Um, not F1, but number one below the F1. That will set your fans to max speed. Or you can set a custom profile where it basically you can set fan start temp, stop temp, and full fan speed um, percentage. And that controls CPU uh, fan speed only. Um, you got other options here like uh, volume and brightness of the LCD, etc. Under device here, you've got touchpad disable, camera enable disable. Under gaming, um, there is some interesting things. You can turn off your Windows key if you don't want to actually pop that while you're gaming and have it bump you back to Windows. Um, but uh, you also have the, uh, you can pop up the uh, keyboard app that I just showed you, you here. Um, also, if you have Intel X XTU installed, it puts this link here. So just bring up, I'll just bring up uh, Intel XTU like that. And then you also have, this is a new feature, which is very interesting, the GPU overclock. Uh, Clevo has come up with this application, which allows you to uh, overclock your GPU. 
I'm going to go ahead and turn this on. And this GTX 980 desktop class actually has an unlocked core overclock. It can go up to 700 megahertz core overclock. Now I have tried to overclock this specific GPU, but something's flaky it's either the drivers or the firmware or something, and I have not been able to get um, past 80 or 90 megahertz overclock, um, even though temperatures are great, and uh, I can't imagine voltage is an issue there either. Um, memory, video RAM, you can also overclock up to 300 megahertz, or I believe that's effective 600 megahertz overclock. That I was able to do, no problem. Although, considering at 7, 7 gigahertz uh, video RAM, at the performance of this uh, GTX 980, um, it really didn't help a whole lot in the performance. So you know that your video RAM is not holding you up. All right, go ahead and turn this off. Oh, it, since the system does support SLI, you can see here you've got a one and a two here. So if you have an SLI card in the system, you can control both independently here as well. Um, there is the, let's see here, killer app. I won't go too much into that. Um, You can uh, do packet prioritization and things like that. Manage your wireless connections and look at your strength and different signals around here. Um, and then there is a double shot pro on here too. I'm not sure how that well that works, but uh, you can look. I'll just leave uh, details on that later. Uh, there is a Sound Blaster XFi app, which it doesn't work when I have my headphones plugged in for some reason. So I think I pulled that over. No. Well, I can't go to each of these until unless it works, so maybe I can show that later. Um, with the uh, headphones disconnected. In any case, speaking of which, um, we will move on to benchmarks. Let's see, is there anything else we want to touch on before we go there? Oh, storage subsystem, I did mention that. Um, I did run uh, Crystal Disk Mark, and you can see here that uh, because it is PCIe, it uh, breaks the uh, SATA 3 barrier quite significantly. This uh, particular SSD, uh, the Samsung Samsung 950 Pro M2 NVMe PCIe um, 512 gig SSD, um, as you can see, works uh, quite well as far as sequential transfers and in general. I mean, the speeds are phenomenal. Well, you know, 1700 megabytes per second read and 1500 megabytes per second write. And uh, there's your performance as your uh, file size uh, gets smaller. I did also run Addo. Uh, one thing I did notice, this uh, uh, drive does not have a temperature sensor, probably because it's NVMe. I don't know if the apps can't read it or even Samsung didn't provide a readable sensor. But I do believe that uh, this is thermal throttling based on the Addo benchmark. As you can see, as it goes through the benchmark, it kind of drops performance down to here. Although it's not a significant drop like we saw in the SM951 drive, it is a slight drop in performance, but it's still staggeringly, you know, like 1200 megahertz. So um, in any case, there's those results. All right, now we can look at uh, benchmark numbers. Okay, I did take... Uh, um, graph the uh, performance results of the CPU and GPU benchmarks and the CPU benchmarks I did uh, graph it with respect to my desktop i7 5820k as well as the Sager MP 9758 with the 980M GPU and the i7 6700k so the same CPU then also the uh, Sager NP9773 with the Haswell i7 4790k and a mobile i7 4710HQ um, you can see here um, performance between the two 6700K CPUs are about the same, and obviously the hexa-core i7-5820K, which is a six-core hyper-threaded CPU, scores significantly better, which is to be expected. Um, but real comparison here, I guess, is between the i7-4790K, the Haswell, as well as a mobile um, performer. So you can see a significant improvement there. And uh, Cinebench R15, as well as W Prime version 210, eight threads. Um, obviously, i7-5820K does a little bit slightly better, and it is probably about 10% better than the i7-4790K and a significant leap forward from a mobile processor. See the similar result here on X264 version 5.0 compression software. 74.3 um, uh, pass 1, 19.3 pass 2 score, comparable to the uh, 9758 with the same CPU. 5820K obviously a little bit better, and then similar performance increase um, 
about 10% over the uh, Haswell with the 4790K and again maybe about a 30 to 5 percent improvement over 4710HQ. I did take the power draw measurements from the wall during these benchmarks and uh, you can see the bright green is this review unit. Blue is the uh, NP9758 with a 980M and the i7-6700K. Now the reason why this is probably lower is because I did not lower the voltage on the uh, CPU on the NP9758 even though it has the same CPU. Um, so temperatures and uh, power draw will probably be higher as you look through these benchmarks and that's probably why I don't have the MP9758 anymore so I'm not able to run those benchmarks again to compare appropriately but in any case we're more interested in the uh, this review unit anyhow. Um, the orange is the MP9773 with the Haswell i7-4790K and the teal is the mobile CPU. So the power draw is 102 watts, 103 watts, 104 watts, a little over 100 watts um, when it's just a CPU uh, loaded application. Um, CPU temperatures during these, again you can see 69C, 76C, 73C, so 76C is your peak um, with W prime. Uh, moving on to the GPU scores, um, let me go ahead and tap the volume for a second here. You can see uh, what you see here is the green is the review unit, the NP9870 dash G with the i7-6700K and the GTX 980 desktop class GPU and this percentage here is the percentage improvement over this Sager NP9758 with the same CPU i7-6700K and a 980M and then I also included my desktop with the uh, GTX 980 Ti so you can kind of get a feel for performance where this stands and generally you'll find that the 980 is about 35% faster than the 980M in a 1080p scenario. In this case the graphics score 3D Mark 11P is 36%. Graphics for 3D Mark 11X is 39%. Uh, 3D Mark Fire Strike again 35, 32% the score and then the graphics which is probably more representative of actual GPU performance differences. A 13407 GPU score. Um, Unigen Heaven, again 35% um, improvement over the 980M and this is the score, just move the decimal place over to get the actual score if you're interested in that, but mostly I took the uh, FPS out of that run. And then what we have here is the um, entire um, benchmark uh, gamut that I ran, uh, which includes RMA3 in ultra settings. These are all at 1080p and the CPU is set at 4 gigahertz. Um, again the bright green is the uh, sample test unit, the NP9870G you can see over here. Um, this is incorrect, it should say NP9758-G, but uh, just make a note of that. I will correct that later. Um, so basically it's the same CPU again um, just the 980M versus the 980 and then also the uh, red is the 980 Ti desktop. Um, but first RMA3 Ultra, uh, it's more or less uh, CPU limited so you're more or less in range the same performance. Moving into Ashes of the Singularity, it's somewhat CPU limited but uh, the GPU still helps improve it where it should be. Um, Assassin's Creed Syndicate, very high settings. If I set to ultimate settings, I mean this thing just goes to a crawl, even my desktop is not does not perform well so I thought I'd set it to very high settings. In any case you see again 33% improvement over the 980M. Uh, Batman Arkham Knight with Gameworks and without Gameworks um, 31% with, with and 40% without. And uh, continuing on Bioshock Ultra DDOF 1080p 31% improvement over 980M. 35% improvement over Crisis 3 at 70.9 frames per second. Uh, Final Fantasy 14, 45% uh, improvement over 980M. And the Grand Theft Auto 5, the only thing I could see from here is it's somewhat CPU limited, so you're pretty much on par across the board there. Metro Last Light Redux, 37% improvement. Uh, Shadow Mortar, I couldn't figure this one out. I don't think it's really that CPU heavy, but uh, I could not get to uh, understand why this performance of this review unit was lower than it should have been. Um, Thief, again 35% improvement and uh, Witcher 3 at 63.8 frames per second in ultra settings. 
is about a 39% improvement. So you can see across the board here, take out the, some of these anomalies or CPU limited apps or games, um, you're looking at about a 35% improvement over a 980M. Um, same thing, I took uh, CPU and GPU temperatures and power draw, but you look at the CPU temperatures during the artificial benchmarks compared with the 9758 with a 980M. Again, the uh, CPU was not undervolted on this machine, but just to give you a comparison, uh, that's probably about what it would have run on this machine as well from my earlier testing. Uh, but see in the mid 60s for the most part. Uh, temperature during games. You know, your peak was Batman, Arkham Knight, or Bioshock, uh, Crisis 3. So mid 70s is worst case. Otherwise, it's probably upper 60s, low 70s. And then uh, GPU temperatures. Um, pretty much the same across the board 67. C, 71, 70, 73 in the artificial benchmarks and then for the game benchmarks you can see it's all pretty much uh, Final Fantasy bumped it up to 78 but the fans might have been acting funny there. I can look at the actual uh, temperature profile and see what the average was there but uh, these are all peak uh, temperatures too, not average so uh, typically they run maybe about 10% lower on average. And then finally uh, power draw from the wall You've got uh, 236 watts. This has a 330 watt power supply, which I should have mentioned earlier. But you can see that that's more than adequate for the performance of this machine. Um, well under, you can see your 256. The highest one was, <coughs> excuse me, 262 uh, watts with Crisis 3. That's peak draw. Average draw is probably about 240 to 250. So all in all, its uh, power supply is more than adequate and the power, power draw you can see the difference there against the uh, 980M machine is maybe about 10 to 15 percent um, and I believe that'll about do it hopefully this was informative and uh, it helped you out in your uh, purchase decision thanks and take care